Welcome to this special edition of Discover Germany, DW's Travel Guide. Today's program is devoted to the country's capital, Berlin, a constantly changing city. Although it's been 25 years since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the German capital is still shaped by its nearly three decades of division. Countless landmarks still bear witness to the city's Cold War history. But Berlin is also changing at a rapid pace, especially in those areas along the former border. Widely considered a livable, multicultural, creative city, it's become one of the most popular travel destinations in Europe. The Spree River flows through the center of the German capital. For almost 800 years, it has both divided and connected Berlin. In olden days, a large tree trunk was lowered to block the waterway at night and prevent ships passing unnoticed. This bridge marks the spot. It is one of the loveliest bridges that cross the Spree. When the Berlin Wall was built in August 1961, the Spree River became part of the border between West Berlin and the Communist East. A few days later, East German border guard shot Günther Litvin as he tried to escape to the West. He was the first victim of East Germany's shoot-to-kill border policy. After the peaceful revolution of 1989, Potsdamer Platz was transformed by new high-rises. The district is now a symbol of the huge changes to the cityscape following the fall of the Berlin Wall. After reunification, Berlin once again became the capital of Germany. While preserving its history, the city also built a new modern government district. The architecture is intended to express transparency and the government's closeness to its citizens. Museum Island is home to five major museums and their many treasures. The latest building to be renovated is the Neues Museum, Its most famous exhibit is the bust of Nefertiti. The renovation work deliberately left scars from the war as a reminder of the building's turbulent history. The Jewish Museum's floor plan and interior space is reminiscent of an unraveled Star of David. The memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe consists of 2,711 concrete slabs of different heights, creating a pattern of waves turned to stone. It's located only one block south of one of Berlin's main landmarks, Brandenburg Gate. Berlin is always on the move, during the daytime and especially at night. As the night continues, the rhythms intensify and the beat gets faster. The Berlin club scene gets off to a late start, continuing until dawn. Berlin is a city with something for everyone. The city on the Spree River, monuments of architecture and entertainment round the clock. Almost every tourist to Berlin pays a visit to a site where the wall once stood. That's certainly true of Jeremy Hexham from Canada, who's very interested in Cold War history. We accompanied him on a tour around the city.
My name is Jeremy Hexham. I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I am doing my PhD in political communications at the University of Calgary. Today, we're going to look at the history of the, uh, the sites of the Berlin Wall, which fell November 9, 1989. A good part of the Berlin Wall is actually still marked, so we're going to go on our trip to the following the Berlin Wall Trail. It's amazing how society, a, gr a group of people, a government could do that to people. It's just unreal. I'm here at the famous Checkpoint Charlie and just down the street over there is the Checkpoint Charlie Mauer Museum. I want to go in there because it should have displays that show how people escaped through, over and under the Berlin Wall, as well as what life was like. And I'm really interested in just what it was like living with the Berlin Wall in the middle of a divided city. This museum is incredibly interesting. Not only does it give the history of Checkpoint Charlie and the way people escaped, which I thought it, that's all it would have, it gave the history of the Berlin Wall and a lot of the information about the GDR. Behind me is one of the last original guard towers still standing in Berlin. Uh, the reason I wanted to come to this ta tower was simply because it's the last one standing and the chance to go up and actually see what it looked like and to see what the guards would have looked like when they were on patrol. I see a lot of grassy fields. Uh, I see trees, but I guess back in the DDR days, what I'd see is a death strip, and if anyone tried to escape or move over there, I could, uh, somebody would open fire. So far on this trip, I've been looking at the Berlin Wall and issues related to the Berlin Wall. But what was it li like to live in East Germany? I have several friends who grew up in the East, and they've tried to explain it to me, but I've never got a chance to actually understand it. At least here at the DDR Museum, I'm going to see what life was like in East Germany. So let's go in. <laughs> In my opinion, the fall of the Berlin Wall was one of the greatest events of the 20th century. If I had a time machine, I would love, I would do anything to go back to be in Berlin on November 9th, 1989. This was a fabulous trip, and thank you for coming with me on my Berlin Wall DDR road trip. Hopefully, we'll see you in Berlin really soon. Among Berlin's many attractive features are the numerous rivers and lakes in and around the metropolitan area. Along with the River Spree, countless canals crisscross the city. 
One great way to admire Berlin's historic center is by boat. And on hot summer days, bathers can choose from over 20 lakes and 11 open-air pools. Lake Wannsee has one of the oldest beaches. The finest sand, brought specially from the Baltic Sea coast. Wannsee Bathing Beach has room for more than 40,000 people to relax and enjoy the lakeside. In the 1920s, it was planned to make Vanze Beach a cosmopolitan open-air lido of monumental proportions. Then the world financial crisis of 1929 put an end to the high-flying plans. Only the first phase of construction was completed in the functional style known as Neue Sachlichkeit, new objectivity. Axel Ott has been keeping a watchful eye on swimmers for 43 years. He's the longest serving beach attendant in the complex and probably its biggest fan. Wannsee Beach has such atmosphere. You come in and look out over the lake towards Klado and Gato, over Heckershorn. The sand is almost like in the Caribbean. We have more than a kilometer of beach. If you sit and watch the sunset over Schwan and Werder Island, you'll cancel your holiday, buy a season ticket, and become a regular here. Axel wants to show us what was originally planned for the bathing beach. These are old projections from 1928. This is how the Lido was originally supposed to look. In fact, it was only built up to this embankment here on the southern end, and that was all. In 1928, it was planned to go as far as Wannsee Pier. That's about another 800 meters. Axel has many more stories, but we have to move on. Our boat is about to leave from the pier where the beach was originally supposed to end. We're going into the city. It'll take us a good three hours on this excursion boat. One last look at the beach, and then we go past the Wannsee Villas, along the River Hafe, towards the city center. Captain Imo Zeliga says Berlin has more water than Stockholm, some 200 kilometers of navigable canals, and about a thousand bridges. More waterways than Amsterdam and Venice put together. He's been navigating Berlin's waterways for 32 years. They say Berlin was built from barges. In other words, all the building materials were brought to Berlin on barges back then. Berlin would be unimaginable without water. Coal is still brought on barges to Reuter power station. During the Berlin blockade, it supplied the isolated West Berliners with electricity and ensured their survival. After about two hours, we approach the city center, passing a great deal of modern architecture along the way. After German reunification, a real construction boom took place on the banks of the Spree. This is the German Chancellor's office. It was the first building in what's now the federal government and parliamentary quarter. Diagonally across from it is the main railway station and thousands of people enjoying this summer sunshine. But then the crosses behind the Reichstag come into view, a reminder that in the past, the waterway also meant suffering. Here, the Berlin Wall bordered on the Spree and the virtually uncrossable river itself formed part of the border installation. We get off outside Friedrichstraße railway station and go into the Palace of Tears, where people crossing to the west from East Berlin were once processed. It got its name from the farewell tears that were shed. Now it contains a museum documenting daily life in the divided Germany. You can learn about people such as Reinhard Klaus, who was an environmental activist in the former East Germany. He repeatedly applied for permission to leave the country and after many years received it. He remembers the exact moment when a border official stamped his passport. Then we'd made it. 
Just a few meters through the tunnel to the underground platform, which were all still East German territory, but we knew nothing could happen to us anymore. Our excursion comes to an end. We disembark at Museum Island and follow the sounds of swing music on the opposite bank. For five euros every Friday at Strandbar Mitte, the mother of all Berlin beach bars, you can learn the basics of swing dancing. On other days, it's salsa or tango, always with a fantastic view of Museum Island. We'll now meet up with Miguel Castaño Vanegas from Colombia to stroll around the popular districts of Kreuzberg and Neukölln. The hip and colourful shops and eateries in the neighbourhoods here are particularly popular with young people from all around the world. Every district has its own flavour and character, and that makes every stroll through the city an adventure. Hi, my name is Miguel. I come from Colombia. I spent the night on this ship. It's hard to believe it's in Berlin, in Kreuzberg. I've heard that this district is very interesting. Come with me. This hostel offers a great experience. It's something special because it's between the wall and the Spree River in the middle of Berlin. Simply unbelievable. It's very exciting for me to walk along the wall. The whole world knows about the Berlin Wall. Everyone's heard of it. And I can be here, see it, get to know it. What a lovely view. The buildings along the river look like warehouses. And there's a strange sculpture there in the background. Now we're in the district of Neukölln. Look, an old photo booth. You don't get these in Colombia. I'll make a few photos in a minute. In Colombia, a lot of people would just take the booth. I'm taking this as a souvenir. I like them. There are lots of hats here. It's incredible what there is to see in Neukölln. They're making cotton candy here. Apparently it's not being made to eat, but for an art piece in a gallery. What does this sculpture mean? We want to portray paradise. They're meant to be clouds. I've never seen anything so creative. Where do you come from? Colombia. This is Neukölln, and this represents everything that makes it what it is. I had a great day. I hope you enjoyed it too. And that's all for this special edition of Discover Germany, the travel guide here on DW. See you next time.